We're glad to know you're still there and watching Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. We're being joined by Professor Sani Fage, who is going to be looking at our first hot topic. Uh, remember that the Minister of Foreign Affairs has said that the Tinubu administration, uh, there is a lot of investment that is coming into the country in this present administration. So he's going to help us make sense of that or tell us what he feels about that statement. Good morning and welcome to the program, Professor. Thank you. Good. Okay. So uh, this statement by the Minister of Foreign Affairs is what uh, we're we trying to look at now. Maybe some other people have different ideas about what this present administration is giving us as gains to the country. He's saying that a lot of investments are uh, coming into the country in this present administration. What, what is your take on that? Yeah, my take uh, on it is that... Um this, as he said, is, is a proposal or rather an ambition that uh, investments are coming. Now, for that, we cannot say he's saying the, the truth or not because he said they are coming. He hasn't said that they have come. So uh, maybe we are likely going to see some investment. But so far, uh, the government has not been up and doing and uh, in trying to attract such uh, investment. That is one thing. Secondly, you know, investors are very wary, are very sensitive uh, to the environment that uh, they are coming in. And uh, so the government hasn't done much on the issue of insecurity. Um, there is also the issue of, uh, you know, uh, you know, corruption, which is a, a ban on Nigerian uh, political system. And also there is, there is this issue of multiple taxations. Even though the government is saying something about uh, multiple taxation, but these are all things that the investors will look at before they come in. So I think what you said is just raising our hopes that, that uh, we are going to uh, investment but so far, I don't think there is anything concrete that will actually actualize such uh, investment in Nigeria. Well, he was okay. so confident. Sorry, okay. he was so confident and said that it, the the country is witnessing. He didn't say will witness. He said is witnessing um, investment so much in uh, this administration. So the confidence he exuded is what surprised us, whether there are some things that we didn't see or we are not seeing that you can see. But you're saying it's a prayer, it's a hope that something good will happen uh, in this thing. Well, he also talked yeah. about um, Aliko Dangote signing a $500 million deal. Um, he talked about another one with the BUA. So he was very confident and he said in mm. the past two weeks, we've had about $2 billion in investment. But now you're saying something different that is just hopeful mm -hmm. and it's not for certain yes i think this, this is a, a hope uh, uh, to me because uh, we are in this very nigeria with him and we haven't seen uh, such investment after all the one he's mentioning uh, domestic uh, investors they are already having their businesses here in nigeria so whether you count them or not they are already on ground they are nigerians so the idea is when they talk of investment everybody's mind will run to foreign investors coming to nigeria mm -hmm. Not uh, Nigerians uh, spending money already. It is here. They have their own businesses. So it's nothing new. So I think this is more of uh, political talks that, uh, you know, will now raise the hopes of Nigerians that, yes, uh, the good uh, thing is coming. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. But when you mention this one, you are just justifying what already exists that uh, they have these businesses after all we nobody hopes that they will uh, pulled up and close shop and go so for them to say that they are putting this amount of money i don't think there is anything new to that uh, statement uh, but do you see any uh, light in, at the end of light at the end of the tunnel because the the president has um permit the word boasted that um 
he will find his way into the Guinness Book of Records as the president that started from day one by implementing policies. Have you seen any policy that might give us this kind of investments that you are seeing? Uh, probably the Minister of Foreign Affairs is hoping that we are going to get in this country. Do, have you seen a policy direction that you think will bet these uh, uh, huge investments that he's talking about in the nearest future in Nigeria? No, actually, I haven't seen it, except for the globe trotting going here and there, uh, with the hope that uh, they will attract uh, the investors. That is what we have seen so far. But in terms of uh, creating an enabling environment where investors will come, I think uh, we haven't seen anything uh, on the, in that direction. Secondly, if you are to weigh what he has been saying so many promises and nothing uh, is done look at even the minor sin agreement with the labor uh, which which was supposed to have been uh, still uh, you know signed and still and done within a month but up to now things are you know dragging uh, if not for that crisis in Imo, I don't know whether we are going to be plunged into, uh, you know, another labor strike or crisis. And also look at the issue of palliatives. Look at so many things that have been promised in the past uh, seven months, you know. Uh, we uh, hopes were raised that the government will hit ground running on the very day it was sworn in, and yet we are now seven months. All we have are bags of uh, baggages of uh, promises, and not much uh, on the ground to be seen. Okay. Well, um, the uh, medium uh, the medium term expenditure framework was approved now, and. Uh, uh, one of the plan was to borrow 7.8 trillion naira in 2024. Uh, I don't know how that will contribute to the economy or will mar the economy in your own opinion. Uh, is that a good thing for us? Borrowing of 7.8 uh, um, trillion naira for 2024. No, I think it will mar the economy. Because after all, like, after all, like the saying goes, uh, you can't uh, be doing the same thing and expect different results. We know one of the major problems of Nigeria is this uh, debt. We can't be going deeper and deeper into debt and then expect that a uh, uh, miracle will happen. After all, uh, the simplest thing that shows is that now for every naira that Nigeria gets, uh, we spend about uh, 7, 95 kobo on debt services. So if you just borrow and now you earn something to pay debt services, I think you cannot go out of this debt trap. Instead, we are going deeper and deeper. You see, in other climes, when the countries have such problems, what they do is to try to look inwards, cut expenses, unnecessarily expensive, and now try to adjust. Even in Nigeria, that's what we used to have in the past. But now, if you look at even the medium term expenditure, I mean, the, this short budget that has been, look at what has been put in terms of unnecessary expenditures and so these are the expenditures that will not generate anything instead they will consume uh, uh, the meager resources that we have and yet we go and borrow it's just like somebody borrowing uh, and going to buy a car or a house or a dress uh, he will be clean and uh, you know out but uh, at least when the time comes, you, you wouldn't have the capital. So I think this is a, a disastrous way. This is a dangerous way of going by borrowing and borrowing more. That will put us deeper and deeper into the debt trap. Okay, so how do we rebuild the fundamentals to ensure that we are not borrowing as much as we currently are right now? Yeah, what we do is, well, like I said earlier on, we have to cut um, uh, our expenses, uh, have a realistic budget, 
based on uh, the strength of our economy. Secondly, we try as much as possible to be self-reliant. After all, when we go to uh, like Saudi Arabia, what we are looking for is alone to revive our uh, refineries. Then why can't we look at these issues? Okay, and also we, uh, you know, uh, block uh, leakages. Uh, for example, we uh, they depend much heavily on uh, oil, and yet a great percentage of it is being stolen. These are issues that we have to address in order to, uh, you know, get ourselves out of the jail drop. But going to borrow is just like putting it, uh, you know, a two-way pocket. You put it on the top and it will sit down because corruption is there and then the wastages are there and we don't look at uh, things. And the other way also that we are looking, uh, putting more taxes, more taxes, that, you know, that one is also killing the economy. Because by the time you put uh, taxes on, uh, you know, investors, what they will do is they will be capital polite. They will just leave your place and go to where they will get better deal. So I think what we are doing, we are going on the wrong direction. Mm. Okay, but what, what you're saying is uh, we should look inward and see what we can do. But one of the resolutions of the Senate, while they were approving this uh, medium-term expenditure framework uh, and fiscal policy, is that... Uh, everything that is locally produced must not, okay, they are proved that it yeah. must not be imported. imported anymore. If something can be locally produced, it must not be imported anymore. And I'm asking myself, what are those items? Uh, will, will we stop importation of cars? Because we have a local manufacturer here. Do we stop importation well, of rice and every rice, other thing? Yes. Because we have uh, those things locally, locally produced here. But the question is, is that one of the solutions you have profiled now because you said we should look inward and see how we can produce things as well? Is that a good thing to say by the Senate? No, I think the, what they said is, is a contradiction. Look at the example that you give about cars. Okay? Uh, they are the same people who say they don't want, uh, uh, you know, the uh, national uh, for. Uh, they, would, they prefer foreign cars, uh, even in the budget. So you can't say one thing and do another, and then you expect miracle to happen. If we want, uh, they have to lead by example. The leaders have to lead by example, and they consume uh, our own, uh, you know, homemade, locally made uh, products. But you cannot say something, and then at the same time, you prefer foreign uh, goods, and then you expect the common man to do it. After all, who consume most of what we produce? Uh, uh, is it not the elite? Is it not the few wealthy people? The poor man doesn't have the capacity to consume. So those who are consuming are saying we do it, and then they go and, uh, you know, prefer foreign uh, goods. Hmm. Okay. So talking about the investment that we're supposedly witnessing, the huge investment, um, do you think Nigeria right now is currently attractive to these investors, these foreign investors coming in? No, I don't think we are attractive uh, because, like I said earlier on, investors are very sensitive. Uh, to the environment and uh, look at uh, what happens there is nothing that has changed in terms of what scares uh, uh, you know investors one you don't have uh, the insecurity two there is uh, the problem of uh, corruption uh, three there is a problem of uh, you know uh, multiple taxations and uh, four, there is a lack of, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure. You don't have electricity. You don't have all the resources that you need for the industries to keep on going. We didn't address any of this. And then you expect people to come and invest their money. I think we are pulling ourselves if we don't think we have to create the, in the environment before they will come. Yeah, but now um, they mentioned two investors that are um, local, and you said these are people who will not just up and run away. Uh, but so while we're trying to look inwards, even if we do not have these foreign investors come in, what can be done to encourage local investors so that our economy could grow? Because, for instance, China locked, as it were, their country 
uh, for like 30 years. And when they opened their borders and began to trade with other countries and, and you know, became liberal to trade, we saw that China had developed so much that uh, a lot of countries that they began with could not measure up to them. So how do we look inwards to make sure that internally or locally we have investors investing within the country? You see, it is easy. when you It's not just you look up, but when you look up, try to uh, create the, the enabling environment. Okay? Uh, in terms of the infrastructure, you develop it. Uh, in terms of the human capital, you develop it. Here we are, you know, we virtually everything that will have been the engine of growth, we are killing it in one way or another. Okay, look at the educational sector, look at the infrastructure, look at, uh, uh, you know, get taxation and other things. So when you look and you didn't do anything positive to create such situation, I think you'll end up stabbing yourself instead of, uh, you know, uh, getting your people out of it. Mm. Mm. Okay. okay. I don't know if you have another question. No, I think that's what we're going to yes. leave it. Um, we'll just peg it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been speaking to Sani Fage. Um, we've been talking about Nigeria witnessing huge investments under President Tinubu's administration, said by the Foreign Affairs Minister. And I think we've just had insights on what we can do, making sure that we have good infrastructure, um, security, and all of those things to make Nigeria attractive for these foreign investors to come in. Thank you so much, um, Sani Fagi, for you, joining sir, for us. Thank you, for coming on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Okay, we'll go on a quick break, and when we're back, we'll be talking about the 440 million Naira SUV, where the Lagos State Governor, Government has said um, it's, it's not that, it's not as controversial as we think. We'll be speaking to another guest in our next Hot Topic. Stay with us.